I want to show uh, this idea. So in PMPJS v2, uh, we very much we have this idea of uh, selective imports, and selective imports is the idea that you can choose which parts of PMPJS you want to import into your project. So this has the benefit of uh, giving you much smaller bundle sizes and limiting what you include to just what you need. So for example, in V1, uh, it, everything is attached to the web object, basically. So you imagine web has lists and content types and everything else, and that tree of stuff uh, it means your bundle gets all that stuff, even if you just want to do some simple operations around uh, webs, for example, or lists. You still end up with the entire bulk of PMPJS in your project, which uh, you know isn't horrible. It's not going to end the world, but we could do better. So in V2, we took a lot of time uh, to come up with these uh, this idea of selective imports and we restructured the entire internals of the library around that. And so uh, what this project is showing <coughs> is this idea that <coughs> it's great that we can selectively import just the pieces we want, but that could be sort of annoying if we have to do that across every file in our project. So we might have a project that has six different web parts. And if I have to have 12 different imports for PMPJS in six different files, that's kind of annoying. We can do better, right? So this pattern that I want to share today is this idea of creating a pre, what I'm calling a preset file uh, within your project. So in one spot, you can include everything you need from PMPJS. So we're going to include uh, our extend factory method. We're going to include the SP REST class. Then we're going to do our selective import. So we're importing webs, items, lists, sites, fields. We're importing a couple of the objects we're going to need. Um, and we're importing uh, this URL format type. And then in this sample, we want to show uh, how to extend uh, the typings, how to extend the declarations. So uh, so you get nice IntelliSense with the things you're adding via extensions. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on extensions because that's not what this demo is exactly about. But we've got articles on extensions, and this is actually a sample. I'll show you where to, where to find this in just a, a second. But this is actually out there and available for you to have a look at uh, after the call. Um, so we have a, we're going to add a method to web called ensure special list. Uh, just as an example, it's not really actually that special, but I like to think of it as special. And then we're using that extend factory method. So this is a new V2 capability. Uh, we're going to extend the web factory. Sorry, we're going to extend the web factory so that every web we create within our project will have our new method. So we can have our ensure special list method, uh, you know, defined here. And it's a method that takes uh, a couple of parameters. Um, and this is just something I define. It's a title and a description. Um, it gives us back a promise. And what we're actually doing is then using uh, PNPJS to say uh, this dot list, and we can type the lists in TypeScript using the the this uh, you know syntax. If you're not not familiar with that, it's a way uh, to type the this object in a function. Though you do have to define it as a function, uh, arrow functions have no concept of this. So uh, we're using a function here. We're saying this is, a, is an iWeb instance. And uh, we're going to say we're going to ensure this list. And then uh, we're going to say the first time. So if you haven't used the ensure method for lists, you get back an object that tells you whether or not we created it uh, with that call. And if we did create it, what we're going to do is in a batch, so again, showing off the very simple fluid batching for PNPJS, um, we're in a batch, we're going to add two fields. We're going to add a text field and we're going to add a URL field, um, uh, very cleverly called text field and URL field. And then we're going to wait the execution of that batch. And then we're just going to, that's it. We've created our list, we're happy. And then the other thing we could do in a preset is we can actually export some of the stuff we might need in our projects. Um, so we don't have to import them from PMPJS directly. We import them here one time, and then uh, we can uh, export them from here so we can use them easily. And then we're going to export this SP uh, const. So what this, this is actually creating essentially the root of our Fluent API. And there's no difference 
from exporting it here versus importing the one from PMPJS. But the idea here, and that what I want to show you is we then in our project, so I've jumped over to now my web part code in my project, and this is just an out of the box uh, SharePoint framework web part uh, built using no framework and then added uh, just this PMPJS example code. So we're just going to import SP from our preset. So we're not importing at this point from at PMPJS. We're importing uh, directly uh, just the SP uh, object from our preset. We're going to come in here. We still have to do our setup, but you'll note in V2, we have a much simpler setup model we've added. Uh, you, you can now just say SP setup this dot context. So you don't have to put that uh, sort of uh, object structure in anymore. You still can put this object structure in if you have additional configuration. The, set, the signature of the setup method has just changed to accept the context. So you don't have to update any of your existing code, but this is uh, the nice uh, quick way to get uh, the context uh, since this is a very common uh, function folks are performing many times. Uh, so as we set up this dot context gives us the setup we need to have the context we need. And then uh, I'm doing, uh, so again, no framework. So I'm just creating elements, uh, manipulating them directly, um, adding event listeners, and then appending those. Um, this is something uh, I like to do in demos because I think sometimes folks get very focused on including certain frameworks and frameworks, this is better than that. But sometimes if you have a very simple web part or a very simple application customizer, doing direct DOM manipulation uh, can be uh, uh, a little bit cleaner, a little bit easier, and a little bit faster. And you don't have the weight of say, including React or Vue or any of these other frameworks for something where I just uh, wanna have a button that does something, right? And then so you can see now in our button action, we're just calling our uh, custom method we've added to web. So our extension method we've added, we're gonna call it. And this gives us very clean code here um, in this example or in this button. Uh, but you could say if this was a method you had to call three or four times uh, across uh, your project, you had like four web parts with a common function. Uh, you've bottled all that functionality into that preset file. You don't have to copy and paste it across. And that's enabled by that uh, extension functionality we've added to V2. So you can very easily include your methods right into the fluent chains uh, that you're calling otherwise. And then we do a very beautiful uh, DOM element, uh, append child. So pretty beautiful stuff there. Um, and then, uh, of course, we want to see this running. So I'm going to go to my go to my page, ignore all the meetings I'm skipping to be here with you all today, and uh, I'm going to load up my page. And we can see I do not uh, currently have a list called my title. So uh, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. And I'm just going to re refresh this. And I do have a uh, Gulp serve already running in the background uh, to save us just a few seconds with that. And I'm going to go try, and this is something I actually learned on this call. Um, I can search in that box, which I think is amazing. So here's my beautiful web part uh, with my very fancy uh, button. I'm going to click that button, and I'm going to assume stuff is happening. And it now says uh, the list should now be there. And now we're going to come in here and refresh this page. And, and, uh, oh, there it is. For a second there, I thought I had somehow screwed this all up. Um, so we can see, but uh, we've got our list. And if I get a gear here in a second, get a gear here in a second, we can go to list settings, or library settings rather. And uh, we can see I've got uh, my very cleverly named text field and URL field. So this is just a fairly simple example, but it's a powerful example in the way that it shows you how with a preset file, we can import all the things we need to once. We can extend PNPJS to include our custom functionality that can be used easily across our entire project. We can export just the things we need. So if we need to import stuff, we can do it within our web part. And then like, for example, we could import web directly from our preset. 
and then we can call very easily our extension methods right directly as part of our fluent method chaining in the library. So really excited uh, for these capabilities. I think they add a lot uh, to what we can do uh, you know, with PMPJS v2 and what you all can do with PMPJS v2. So I wanted to show you real quick, I'm in the PMPJS repository now. Um, I'm in the dev v2 branch. There's a folder here for samples. And I can go uh, to the project preset sample. That's the sample I just showed you all today. And as well, there's two other samples for creating custom bundles with Rollup or with Webpack. Um, so you can feel free to check these out. And I did just want to mention, these are going to be samples that are very specific to PNPJS. They're showing very isolated techniques for using with PNPJS. If you're doing samples uh, around SharePoint framework and, and all those things, those should all still be targeted towards the main samples gallery. So we're not trying to move stuff here or compete or anything like that. These are gonna be samples focused uh, strictly on showing things we're talking about in our documentation. So these will be samples um, really around demonstrating new PMPJS features. But of course, if you have ideas uh, for samples that might be appropriate for this, uh, for PMPJS v2, um, and that tie in uh, very tightly to our documentation, um, reach out, let us know um, if it's appropriate. We'd love to have those added here. I just want to be clear, we're not trying to, to split the world and create two separate uh, places for people to submit samples. So SPFX samples, uh, you know, dev samples should still go in the SP dev uh, samples uh, repositories uh, there. So I think with that, I get to now stop talking for a few minutes and uh, we can move on to Vincent, uh, but excited to show those new features in PMPJS uh, V2 for you all and uh, look forward to seeing how folks might use those. Mm -hmm.